Hello everybody, this is Rick from HRI Services. Today I'm going to start a video series on the rebuilding of the 350 small block Chevy engine in my 1971 Chevrolet K10 pickup truck. It is a short box with a dumper on it and I want the engine to outlast me. So I'm uh, 58, I just turned 58 and I want this uh, engine to, I don't want to have to go into it again. So. I'm going to run through a couple different things. I have stuff written down and I also have a couple of books here for your information. The first thing that you need to do in rebuilding an engine, if this is your first rebuild, is you need to decide what you're going to use it for. Is it going to be a daily driver? Is it going to be used for racing, circle track, drag? Is it going to be used for towing? What's it going to be used for? Uh, you need to figure out the RPMs where you want your maximum horsepower to be. Are you going to have an automatic transmission, standard transmission? Are you going to run a stall converter if you're running an automatic transmission and what RPMs do you want that to come in at? What's the best camshaft profile for you with the RPMs? Where do you want the horsepower to come in at and where do you want your maximum horsepower to be? two books that I can give you for that information and I'm going to touch on both the four stroke and the two stroke because these books they cover both things one is four stroke one is two stroke performance tuning in theory and practice four strokes by A. Graham Bell and performance in tuning and practice two strokes by A. Graham Bell both of these books are phenomenal reading if you're into engines and uh, they will cover everything not general specifications like you would have on a small block Chevy or you would have on an old uh, Honda CB750F or an old snowmobile like a trail twister or a snow twister it's not going to cover generals it's going to cover everything in general engines period two strokes or four strokes depending upon which book you buy um, it gives you information like in the two strokes on uh, the speed of sound and how to work the mathematical equations out to make your own tuned pipes with stingers. Stuff like that. So it does go very deep into it. It goes into how to set up your car and your jetting for alcohol fuels uh, and it touches on nitromethane a little bit also. Now I'm going to show you a few engines in the background that have come apart which would be just something for you to look at while I'm reading to you the information. There is basically going to be eight things in here that you need to do in disassembly and reassembly. You need to verify the engine condition while draining down the fluids. An example of that is look for cream colored oil, light to tan colored oil, which would indicate a crack from a coolant section of the block to the oil section of the block, either a cracked head or a cracked block head gasket or intake manifold gasket leak. You also need to check to see if there is any oil in the coolant while you're draining the coolant. This could mean there could be a tr transmission oil leak from the radiator where the transmission, if it's an automatic transmission coolant line runs through the radiator and it could be getting in that way. It also could again mean an engine crack block head or head gasket or intake gasket leak. So you need to figure those situations out and figure out whether you do have an issue like that or not. Uh, save up some boxes and cardboard for bolting and parts. Mark the boxes with what the bolting is for as you disassemble the engine. If you plan on reusing any of your lifters and push rods, then you need to put them back in the same place as they are worn to those mating surfaces. As you disassemble the engine, you want to look for any signs of cracking, leaking, scoring, broken parts, or holes. Mark parts that you are going to reuse, like connecting rods as one, two, three, etc., to the cylinder that they belong to. In a small block Chevy, you'd be looking front left when sitting in the driver's seat, uh, would be cylinder number one, and it would be 1357 on the left and 2468 on the right. Mark the rods with a set of steel punches so that they can be reassembled in the same position. With the help of a repair manual, verify that all the parts that you're planning to reuse 
are within the factory tolerances provided in that repair manual. This will require tools like a good straight edge, feeler gauges, outside micrometers, dial calipers. Some of these tools you can rent or you can buy them. Starrett is mostly made in the United States and they're great tools but they're pretty pricey. Even the low budget micrometers are fairly accurate. Last off, after the block and heads have been cleaned up and ran through a hot tank, run a bottoming tap through all of the holes to chase the threads and a die on all bolting so that when you torque the bolting, torquing the heads on and torquing the main caps and the rod bearings, that the torque is correct and it will give you the correct tolerances. You will see as I go through this rebuild that I am not going to paint this engine. I couldn't find anything on YouTube about unpainted engines, but I'm thoroughly disgusted with uh, taking my time as in assembly and putting stuff together and painting it and doing a really nice job and within six months the paint is starting to peel off. So I decided on this one, seeing as though I want it to be low maintenance, I'm not looking for a show truck, but I hate it every time I open up a hood and see the paint peeling off, that I went with, uh, you'll see it's the gold zinc plated Milliden oil pan and timing chain cover, uh, aluminum water pump, aluminum intake, aluminum valve covers, but even they're not painted. I'm going to uh, coat the engine once every month or a couple months with some WD-40 and see how that turns out. If the engine block turns the rusty reddish brown, so be it. If the aluminum valve covers, intake, and water pump get a little oxidation on, so be it. I just want low maintenance and that's what you're going to see in this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the series.